Hello everybody, Bill here with the first of what I hope to be many reviews about collectible things. Today we're going to talk about Transformers War for Cybertron Siege Soundwave. Just picked this guy up the other day from Target. Haven't been able to find this wave until recently. As you can see, I may have sat on the box a bit, but I imagine it will taste fine just the same. Give me a moment to free this guy up and we'll talk about him. Okay, and we're back. That took a while, as you can see. I ran into some complications with getting the packaging open. But that's fine. It's all going to go in the recycling. That cardboard should go anyway. Just to get that out of the way. And moving right along to the star of the show. Here we have Soundwave. As not a boombox, but as a space truck. Like Tully Bodine. Just a space 18-wheeler. Wishing through the cosmos. Can't talk right now. Yeah, it looks good, actually, surprisingly. I mean, it's not really the typical sound wave. We have some nice paint applications going on in there. Tons of molding on this thing. Just absolutely every inch is covered in molding, paint, some of that siege battle paint going on right here and on the legs got him some 18 wheeler fog lights going on in the front pew, pew. Uh, cargo loading bay in the back x-wing jet thrusters landing gear with guns that can flip out into attack formation yeah, looking pretty good. I like it. Um, let's see. Going back pretty far in time, we have Fall of Cybertron Soundwave in his space truck mode. It's a bit... Mm, Bit bulk bulkier, maybe a little heavier in alt mode. And then we have Titans Returns Soundwave in his space truck mode. See it works, space truck. Right. Fortunately, I have yet to find laser beak and sound wave. Or not sound wave, laser beacon ravage. They would go in there if I could find one, but I don't. So now we're gonna start transforming this guy. If I can remember how to do it. Split the arms apart. And we're gonna flip this connection uh, right there. And flip down the leg panels. Pull the legs apart, flip this panel up, fold it in, flip the feet out, fold that down, and that is a leg. Fold it in, flip the foot out, close it up, rotate back to the front, kind of accordion sandwich this back down, his backpack. Or the top of the space truck will flip down and open to reveal his little head. And you know what? I do like this mode also. Artillery Soundwave has too many problems and he just don't care. Let's flip his head out. Flip his head out. Close the backpack back up, flip this part down on this double hinged piece, get those to stay, so this shoulder will peg back in, and close this, this shoulder will also peg back in, we can flip these guns back around 
to his forearms and finally bring out his fists. All in all, it's a fairly easy transformation. Not too strenuous. Actually kind of enjoyable to bring him from futuristic Tully Bodine space trucker mode to a very G1 representation of this character. As you can see, we have the paint applications obviously are in the same place. Got some pretty nice light piping going on right there. I do wish that the paint had been a little more carefully applied to my raised pieces here. It's a little little iffy, but not too bad. Ha! Ah, gotcha. Chuck Testa. Alright, this shoulder cannon can come off. Can come off peg in right there and then this one can come off and push this little button boop now it doesn't want to stay out come on yes there we go ready to eject and begin operation annihilate autobots can even sort of reach the button. Can sort of reach the button. Sort of reach. There we go. Yes, Soundwave can reach his own button. Clever man. He also comes with this little fold up cannon antenna thing. But I use it to just make him have a cool little staff like Donatello. Just plugs in, plugs in, very tight on that. Hold it like that. Put this together like that. Just a long, sound wavy sniper rifle. Just sort of peg it all in, peg it all in. And again, we have the paint detailing. All the molding is still fantastic. Put that down. So you can go all the way around, up, down a little bit. Shoulders can go all the way around. Elbows. Got everything there. They can go handless after somebody chops his hand off. Getting pretty windy out here now. Sorry about that. You can flip out wrist mounted laser cannon. As some kind of energon fork after he's dispensing energon cube justice. Yeah, it's like a hurricane. Sound wave coming at you like a hurricane. Back. Got some thigh swivel action. Knees can go all the way back. 90 degrees, can kick himself in the back, can turn his leg around, kick himself in the chest if you want to. Can do the splits. Pretty nice ankle tilt. So we can do some interesting posing. Little hip skirts get out of the way be able to hold that again. He'd hold that pose just fine. <clears throat> he can balance on one leg pretty well actually. So, don't know if 
Let me put this up. Little has some shoulder mounted extra cannons going on. This one. You can hold that like a pistol. I don't really like this particular one. Fits in there. We'll peg on anywhere. He's got these little five millimeter ports. Anywhere. Any more five millimeter ports everywhere. I'm just going to leave it on the back. Almost peg in like so. So that little slot. Yeah. And there's all the articulation. You know, and a funny thing I didn't mention in the part where he was the ship is that this is quite this would be quite a bit of reverse role play for Soundwave. Usually he mass shifts down this being the cockpit on his butt he'd be mass shifting way up probably bigger than Astro Train which is kinda neat alright moving on alright now we're gonna do a couple of size comparisons so here he is the War for Cybertron Siege sound wave figure here he is with the fall of Cybertron sound wave. Quite a bit taller. One thing I want to point out, and this is going to come up again in a second, is his hand also has the finger, the finger gesturing that he would do to eject his button. You can see that right there. And that is important because the Titan's Return sound wave does not have that sculpt. And I thought that would have been a neat uh, thing of continuity if they had included that on this figure now that I'm seeing that this one has it. And the much older Fall of Cybertron figure also has it. So, he cannot actually push his own button, but his discs that would have, had I brought them out here with me, Soundwave or Ravage, can fit just fine in the Fall of Cybertron Space Truck Robot Mode. And this one's... Operation Eject Ugh. Laser Beak. Hello, Laser Beak. How are you? I'm fine. I like this guy. I don't know. I'm just they were simple. I enjoyed them. He fits just fine. See, it works. It just works. It's great. And last but not least. Let me get this guy out to the way over there. Here he is with the TARDIS. It's bigger on the inside. So that's how he stacks up with the other sound waves that have come out. Um, yeah, happy to have this guy in my collection. Wish I'd been able to find him sooner, or wish I'd been able to find really any of these figures sooner as they came out. And just You guys are just buying them up before I can get to the store and get them myself. So anyway, I would definitely recommend this figure to add it to your collection. And when I get another figure, we'll see about maybe doing another review. So hit the like and leave a comment. Bye guys.